Welcome to another episode of the Selective Podcast. I'm your host, XR Arguello. And this week, we have a very special interview with Tanner Reddick, an iconic figure in the fashion Instagram space. Tanner recently worked with the team over at Fashion Moose Forward on their in-house brand, Midnight Rodeo, modeling for the team. This week, we're going to get to know Tanner a little bit more, talk about his rise on Instagram, his personal style, and his work as a stylist in the fashion industry. So without further notice, let's get right into the show. I have to start, you know, when I first started following you, you had a much smaller following than you did now. I mean, how did you build that up so quickly? Man, that's a that's a really good question. Um, it just happened, bro. I mean, yeah. I, I kind of hit on that whenever I talked to uh, I've talked to you know Jackson and Joseph with right. Fashion Move Sword over there, and just it started with me tagging you know the brand, their Fashion Move Sword, things like that, and people started noticing, and just you know other people would repost me and things like that, and I, that's honestly just how it happened. I mean, it was just it's, it's been crazy. You know, I've just been trying to post regularly, you know, on a schedule, like two, three times a week, just to build more followers. And it's not just about followers, but for me personally, as someone that's in the fashion industry and I've got my foot in the door as a, an assistant stylist, I've actually gotten, I've gotten, uh, jobs, you know, paid gigs from posting on Instagram. So that's helped me a lot. So that's, yeah. pretty much my motivation for doing that and it's crazy how it starts with it starts with like something as simple as posting a fit pic and then you kind of like it kind of just goes from there and it grows from there um yeah and now everyone's doing it right everyone's posting their fits which is great and and like you said it's not necessarily about the about the attention but more so about uh, the people you meet you know the kind of the sense of community and it's just wild how all that can happen through a picture i know it's crazy so you're saying our love for Western, like if you have a sick belt on and you just automatically are gravitated towards that person. And I don't know, you kind of like won them over, you know, you've won their yeah. trust right. over a photo and a piece of clothing you have. It's crazy. Definitely. It's uh, insane, man. Speaking of Western, dude, um, I, I know the first time you and I talked over DM, um, uh-huh. not sure if you remember, but I mean, I'd asked you like how, because uh, you were really one of the first, in my opinion. Um, I know there's other people doing it, right? I mean, you can even argue that Saint Laurent and other brands have been, you know, pushing towards that rock star Western look for years now, right? Um, yeah. But uh, I think that uh, you were like one of the first people to really, I mean, to really go full Western. You know what I mean? Like really, really yeah. embrace that Western. And um, I guess it's like an amalgamation of, of like where you grew up and, and like your current interests now, but. I know when you and I had had talked a while ago, it, it didn't even start like your your journey in fashion didn't start with Western. Um, it kind of like grew into that. So, um, you know, how has how has your sense of, of of style evolved from when you first started getting into clothes until now? Oh my goodness! Um, I mean, back when I was a kid, obviously. Uh, I was heavy into, you know, the hip hop rap scene and I really t- yeah. try to tailor my outfits. I mean, that's, this is back when like 50 Cent, like Nelly, all those yeah. people were popping off and I was more into that, right. you know, type of vibe and, but kind of, sorry, backtrack even <laughs> when I was younger, yeah. the Western and everything that was, that was kind of like forced on me by my grandfather, you know, with music, first of all. And then movies, just the Western Americana culture was there. It was there. It was in my roots. I was born into it. Painting, sculptures, all that Western cowboys, Indians everywhere in my home. So that was like, I was born into that. And then I kind of just denied that, you know, when I got older, I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, I don't want to be some hick redneck from Oklahoma as a kid. So, you know, I started dressing more, I would say street as a kid, you know, when that was like popular back then. And then once I got to college, um it was more of like i remember when i was rocking chelsea boots like in 2012 and like people Mm -hmm. were just making fun of me you know stuff like that skinny jeans things like that and it kind of stayed like that for a while and then i went more towards like a granola like i would guess i guess workwear now i mean it was more like patagonia you know stuff like that that i was rocking and i don't know it just kind of took a halt because i got a job uh in a, at a business selling insurance, nothing wrong with that, but that's not me. So I was basically just focusing on 
you know, business attire. And I was like a businessman, you know, for yeah five days a week. And I don't know, Western just kind of, I really sat down and I was like, what, what do I truly, what am I gravitating towards? You know, from like the get go since I was born. And I was like, oh my goodness, this has been on my roots, you know, and I really yeah. started falling in love with, you know, more country music and stuff like that. And it kind of just, I, I became obsessed. Like, yeah, it's crazy, but now it's like, <laughs> that's who I am. That's what people know me for, right. which is crazy. So I'm like, Hey, I'm embracing it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. It, it's an interesting point. You say how like that really evolved over time, right? Like, I mean, it was same yeah. with me when I was younger, I was into the more street stuff, um, like the harder street stuff, sneakers, this and that. And, um, you know, growing up in Texas, to be quite frank with you, I, I was around, uh, especially when I went to school, I was around kids who, you know, were in ag and were in FFA and they dress like, yeah. they dress like super like Western, but like a different type of Western, you know what I mean? Not like a, not like a oh, stylish yeah, Western, so. but like a, you know. I graduated from Oklahoma State. Yeah, exactly. I, I know what you're talking about, bro. <laughs> it, exactly. Yeah. You know the look. And, yeah. and, like, and like growing up, I hated it, man. Like I just... Like looking back on it now, it's weird in hindsight, but like I, w I always told myself like, man, this is not, this is not very stylish. And I, I really didn't like Western. And then, you know, all of a sudden come this past two years, you know, for me, it's just, I've kind of taken an appreciation of where I come from, right? With Texas and, 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 exactly. and knowing that there are people, you know, old, old heads out there who can, st who put on looks and who dress really nice uh, in Western and, um, it's crazy how that's come full circle. Dude, I couldn't agree more, man. It's crazy. For sure. I think that is a huge deal. Just embracing where you're from like Jackson Ray. Um, yeah. that's what we really, uh, hit it off on is, you know, he's from Fort Worth and mm -hmm. I'm from Oklahoma and I have Texas roots for my family and he has Oklahoma roots from his family. Right. So it's like mixing that, you know, from our roots and what you're saying, being from Texas, it's like, it's perfect. Like, you know, it goes hand in hand, man. But, you know, since, since the whole FitPick stuff has happened and, and since, you know, you kind of grown your Instagram, you've gotten other opportunities too. Um, I yeah. mean, from, from your early days of selling insurance and like we said, you know, nothing wrong with that. It just wasn't you. Um, yeah, exactly. to, to, to now really focusing on, on trying to make this or making it a, as a career for yourself. Um, when was kind of that defining moment, you know, when you were looking at your Instagram and you were like, wait a minute, like I could actually do something with this. Did you have like a moment in your head where it just kind of clicked? Um, I think it was back when I was still selling insurance. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't know how to get my foot in the door of the fashion industry. So the only thing I knew was to express myself through my own clothing. And that's, that's how, how it happened. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this, see if it gains attention. And it, it did, you know, there are some people that had seen it. They wanted me to style them, you know, they thought I had really good style myself. So like, I got to work with some people, you know, with test shoots, one thing led to another. I made a stylist, you know, who's that, you know, Marcus or Duff Goodman studio and i just got my foot in the door doing that man so it's been crazy it really did start on instagram <laughs> yeah yeah just my blind <laughs> yeah and a lot of these opportunities have started on instagram um but hey yeah. man you've been working with with the fashion moves forward guys and, and obviously they're doing great work over there with with oh, their articles always. and yeah and they're doing some great stuff um and they've also started their own in-house brand midnight rodeo which um mm -hmm. truly is like elevated western i mean that's what it speaks to me um, and you know, y'all, you went out to New York, you did some shoots, you were on, you were on their podcast too, which was really cool to listen to. Um, so how did that relationship start with, with, with fashion moves forward? And, um, and, and, you know, let's start from like how that relationship happened. And then, you know, you go into uh -huh. New York, I'm sure that was surreal and, and filming with them. Yeah, man. Uh, so it kind of, I mean, it started like how I said, you know, tagging them with my outfit picks and things like that. And there was a couple of days where I got featured, you know, on like outfit of the week, things yeah. like that. And uh, Jackson Ray, he's the founder of uh, Fashion Moves Forward, you know, Midnight Rodeo, him and Joseph are in it together, things like that. Yeah. Uh, he, he saw my post from I think it was found on Grailed. Mm. They did a little style styling deal on me, like my different outfits, and he had seen that and it caught his eye. And so he gave me a follow. 
And we had been DM- DMing back and forth, you know, from just time and time, you know, right. cause I was down here in, in the, the Dallas area and I was like, bro, if you're over here, like let's link, you know, I was just trying to, you know, meet another homie. Right. And all of a sudden, you know, he hits me with a DM. He's like, bro, you know, this is crazy. Like I've, we've been trying to find, you know, they've been trying to find their muse, someone, you know, to model the brand after model it. Um, and he's like, I would love to shoot you when I'm down in the Fort Worth area for a wedding he was coming down to do. And I was like, oh, for sure, bro. But I didn't realize I was actually going up to New York City like the week after to help my friend uh, with a photo shoot, you know, styling and everything like that. Right. So I had booked the flight and I was like, man, I'm coming up. You know, I DM Jackson right away. And I was like, bro, let's let's do something. Let's work up here. And it, it happened, you know, and he he filmed it and we just got to work. And it was just it's just crazy. You know, it's like you're saying like social media, like. I saw Jackson. I saw these guys. They're like, oh my goodness, these guys are like the most connected guys I know. Yeah. You know, like in the industry, like homies with Mike and Mary, you know, things like that. You're right. like, holy cow. So it was kind of surreal, man, to be up there and actually working with those guys. And now we're like homies. Now we're tight. So yeah, it's it, crazy. It is crazy how it comes full circle. Um, and and uh, you know, talk about Midnight Rodeo and and kind of filming that campaign. Um. Mm-hmm. And, and and just so I can read a little bit off their Instagram. Uh, this is off Fashion Week's yeah. Instagram. Man, I wrote a campaign film, uh, Your Night Dreaming, with roots in Texas, New York City, and Las Vegas. Uh, Midnight Rodeo campaign film takes us on a journey with the Midnight Rodeo man, a muse for the first collection's identity. And it goes on, an enigma in his own right, the Midnight Rodeo man leads us through a cinema of the strange as if entranced by a lucid dream, fighting to recall the past, struggling to understand the present, and hoping to improve the future. And... A lot of bold concepts there, but really it's with roots in Texas, New York City, and Vegas. And you can see like those roots, especially from Texas with, with the Western style. So, um, yeah. you know, what, what was it like shooting that, that campaign? I think whenever we shot in New York City, like Times Square, that was crazy. Mm. You know, rocking the full out western gear like i had the leather jacket the, yeah you know the ring the wrangler ranchers of course of course uh the- with the their uh, signature black boot that's coming out yeah and i don't know like obviously you have people that you know make comments and stuff because i mean you're kind of sticking out like the sore thumb everywhere you go if you're rocking stuff like that yeah so that was that was kind of fun you know to do that in new york city but then whenever we shot down here that was even crazier because we did it in uh, like the old town of Fort Worth, mm. that little area. Mm-hmm. And we got a, I got to whip this. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what year, like 1950s, 1960s Chevy or Ford. I forgot. Uh, yeah. Like the guys car, ran out of the car, right? right? For the, for yeah, the we rented that out and that was unreal, man. That was yeah. so fun. I literally felt like I was, had time traveled. Like I wasn't in 2020. Yeah. Like I was, it was, it was insane. Yeah, so. it, it's kind of like the old, like, Starsky and Hutch vibes, kind of like that old, like, Texas vibes. You had, like, the trucker hat, the shirt, yeah. the, the shades, and, like, that car was so nice, too. And you can, it, just the, um, just, like, the photos that came out of that, out of that shoot, it just, even when you look at the photos today, it doesn't look like they were taken this past year. It, it really looks like they no. were taken 50 years ago. And I think the collection yeah. going forward, I mean, it kind of embodies uh, or at least, you know, the collection of pieces that they're going to be releasing really embodies uh, mm-hmm. kind of that, you know, like this old classic Western style. Oh, yeah, man. It's it's crazy. The pieces that are coming out, they're, I mean, they're timeless. You, but the crazy thing also is a lot of the pieces coming out, you can rock them and you don't even have to be into that Western, mm-hmm. you know, 70s niche. You can be a, a, a streetwear guy. You can be workwear guy. Like you can rock things like that. And that's what's crazy about this brand. That's why I'm so pumped, you know, to see Jackson and all the guys succeed because I know they can't, you know, it's going to be crazy. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's awesome that, that you're part of that team, you know, that, you, that you're going to be you know, part of that team going forward and, 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 and yeah. kind of growing with them. Um, but uh, I have to ask, you know, of, of all the pieces that you had on, uh, what was your favorite in the collection? And, and what do you think most people will be excited to, to get their hands on? <sighs> oh, my goodness. I mean, obviously the boots. Oh, but, yeah. oh yeah those you know are, for those listening it's like it's just like a classic black western style boot 
Yeah, and they have like the brown. I forgot the name. It's like a mauve. Uh-huh. How do you say it? Yeah, I think so. It's it, that thing is sexy, man. I wore that one in the Fort Worth, like the more heavy western uh, atmosphere, and that was just I don't know. That one is. I can't wait to get that. I have that boot coming to me soon, so <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about that one. Yeah. But I think a lot of people are gonna love the hats. I think people are gonna eat the hats up, man. Yeah, that's and- why I said like anybody can rock them. And the trucker hat boom is kind of happening as we speak right now. A lot of a lot of people exactly. are getting into trucker hats, and uh, just like just like the classic trucker look is really big right now. It's really hot, and you can like yeah. you can dress it workwear, you can dress it western, and it still looks good. Exactly, man. You can even street like yeah, you could throw it on. Let's. I'm trying to think like you probably throw it on like some athletes, and they would pull it off and look incredible. You know. Yeah. Like another tunnel or something like that. So yeah, it, it's crazy. Definitely. Um, you know, looking back at your Instagram, you've done a lot of professional shoots, and I, I kind of want to get into the photos that, that you've taken and the products you've been a part of um, and kind of your yeah. work in the industry. But uh, uh, one thing when I was listening to the podcast that you were on with them was really interesting is that uh, they mentioned, like, the cigarette scene and, like, how yeah. uh, <laughs> you talked about how, like, uh, how, like your, your grandfather, you know, s- smoked cigarettes. Talk me through that experience. Uh, were you nervous for that <laughs> shot, not being a smoker before? And, and how did, you know, how did you build up to that moment? um it's that's hilarious because we always talk about that um yeah which is shocking because people people think i was like some hard-ass guy and i'm like no (laughs) you can just tell by the way i talk like i'm not some you know Mm -hmm. rough and hard man but uh it was funny because we were sitting there and jackson was like bro like you you know ask me if i want to smoke i was like yeah why not like you know i'm here up here in new york let's do it like you know we're shooting I was like, I, I, I don't care. Like, you know, my grandpa smoked my whole life. Like, I kind of know how to do it. Yeah. And then I had to have Joseph show me <laughs> uh, who was secondhand, uh, second order vanity on Instagram. Uh, yeah. He had to show me how to light it and like puff it and just like, you know, all the other stuff. But I knew how to hold it just because, you know, seeing movies, you know, and I have like a little acting background and I know how to like mimic people here and there. Right. So it kind of all just rolled in this one thing. And I guess the first shoot, they loved it. Like I was just puffing and I'm, I guess I was a natural. And now yeah. I'll smoke it every once in a while. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I always joke that they got me, you know, hooked. I'm corrupted <laughs> now. But you know, it's like a vibe. It's a vibe. When you're acting and when you're doing modeling and stuff, you you kind of have to like get into this role, I feel. Yeah. And and uh, in, the, in the photo shoots that you've done, you're really good at conveying. Like I'm like... I'm hard, don't fuck with me kind of vibe, you know? And yeah. um, I know you mentioned you had some some background in acting and stuff. I mean, how difficult yeah. is it to get into that role? Uh, and, you know, when you're shooting these photos, when you're filming with, with Midnight Rodeo, how difficult was that? Um, I mean, to be honest, it wasn't super difficult just because I knew my my personal style obviously goes hand in hand with Midnight Rodeo. Mm -hmm. and I don't know I knew my look like you know kind of went hand in hand also because you know everyone's like oh you're from the 70s you know stuff like that I'm like I guess right and so Jackson you know getting the right shots at the right time and I mean he's an incredible photographer so he's the one that made me look you know like I was um (laughs) you know chain smoker that's been doing it since I was like 10 yeah you know so yeah I mean I think it's a combination of all those man for sure but you know, we've talked a lot about your personal style, but but we haven't really gone in, into depth of, of, of like the pieces you have. And um, yeah. you know, one thing I'm I'm really big on is that you don't have to you you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money to look really good. Um, oh, by no means. Yeah, and and I think you've done a great job of kind of mixing in both higher end pieces with with uh, with vintage pieces as well. For those listening out there who want to get into who want to get more into the western, I always recommend the Wrangler Ranchers. Man, you can get them on Amazon. They're like hella cheap. Uh, you know, the sizing is a little weird, but once you figure it out, you figure it out. Um, but they're, you know, they're cheap enough where like you can buy a few pairs and you can go the vintage Wrangler route. Um, but you know, that's just my opinion, but anyone getting into Western, you know, what would you recommend some pieces that they start investing in? Oh my goodness. I mean, cowboy boots, that's the Mm. big one, man. I mean, you can rock that with a flare, rock that with a boot cut. Yeah. You know, some people even rock them with, you know, skinnier type yeah. of jeans. Um, so I think the, yeah, I think a 
really good cowboy boot. They could even be vintage. I have a lot of vintage cowboy boots. I have a pair that's from the 70s, and I mm. love those things. I mean, they're beat up and yeah. just hella character, bro. Yeah. So I think a cowboy boot for sure. For sure. It's the first, first and, purchase. And you don't have to spend a lot of money on that. You mentioned the vintage route, but um, in terms of the higher-end stuff, um, yeah. what, what's your favorite pair of, of higher-end cowboy boots that you have right now or that you've been getting oh a little wear out of? Oh, my goodness. I actually, <laughs> so for my birthday, my birthday was in February, yeah. and I bought uh, I bought the Celine 85-millimeter boot. Is that the one you're wearing in, is... your, in your recent Fit pick? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That thing dude. makes me sick. It makes me six foot. <laughs> so i'm not gonna take that thing off man. right right <laughs> it, it, that's a beautiful boot it is sexy bro yeah oh my god yeah and so i needed something like that in my life <laughs> i'm glad that guys are starting to embrace the heels more i mean we i mean obviously keeping heels have been around for a long time like like definitely yeah. like there there have been boots with heels but i feel like you know in the past year or two we've really seen guys kind of embrace wearing boots and wearing heels like really really digging heels um yeah, man. Um, you know, I, I love that we're kind of bridging the gap between quote unquote feminine looks and and you know uh, stereotypes, if you will, of how of how men should dress. But um, exactly. I, I'm a big fan of the heeled boots. Um, those are pretty tall, though. How was the adjustment in those? Oh my god! The first <laughs> the first day I wore them, I went to go get my hair cut, and I was talking to my hairstylist because I had them on, and she yeah. was like, "What are those?" You know, I was telling him what they were. Yeah. And I was like, I can't lie. It's very difficult for me to walk on, walk. <laughs> and, you know, so she kind of told me how, you know, heel first, you know, all that other stuff. So I was like, just wearing them, you know, for two days straight, trying to get used to them. And it's, it's, it's an adjustment. I can't lie. You know, I'm used to, what is like the maybe 60 millimeter, Yeah. you know, and I have my Lucas and they're, you know, a little taller, Right. but yeah, I mean, it, it's an adjustment for sure. Celine's obviously a very, very established luxury brand. Uh, how, how was the quality on, um, yeah. on those boots and, and, you know, out of the box, how, how did they feel to get that for your birthday? Um, I mean, it felt incredible, man. I mean, I, I love them. They're probably one of my, I mean, they could be my favorite pair now. I just have to, you know, keep rocking them, yeah. but they crease very easily. Mm. That's one thing, which I mean, I don't mind. Right. I don't mind at all. You know, I'm going to wear them. So I'm not going to just put the boot on a shelf and, worship it so Definitely. yeah a little creasing but hey it's all good man adds the character for sure for sure um obviously flares are really big right now we're seeing more guys in corporate flares um yeah wranglers are also a big part of that i have to ask man where do you get your wranglers from i don't want to i don't want to uh ruin ruin the the plug spot if you have a particular place but is, is it as simple as just as just I'm gatekeeping wranglers <laughs> i'm just kidding is it as simple as just thrifting wranglers to get that look man it actually it, it, it can be but mm. i mean if you if you want to go straight to the source man i mean i i don't mind i see everyone on them now it's amazon yeah you know, get them from Amazon, hella cheap. Like you said, things like 30 bucks for like the black pair, which I mean, they go with everything. You can't beat that. Right. Um, I go to Cavenders here. Yeah. Cavenders is big Dallas. in Texas. Yeah. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. Man. You can find tons of colorways there, different, you know, sizing is sometimes they run a little small yeah. on their stock, but Hey, it's all good. That's where you go to Amazon. Right. You're never going to run low. Exactly. So, that, that's probably my go-to is Amazon, um, like you said before. So yeah. that's the secret. The secret's out. <laughs> it is. It's Amazon. Yeah, it is out. Um, dude, I have to ask you. Uh, uh, so I know you, you said you're kind of moving into working in the fashion industry. Uh, I yeah. believe you said like some consulting, if you will, or some styling. Uh, how, how has that been? And, and talk me through that process a little bit. Yeah, man. So it's going on six months that I'm actually living like in my dream mm. you know like my foot in the door I'm even closer because before COVID I was working at Saks on yeah. Fifth, yeah and I was an associate and you know I a sales associate but I try to take advantage of like me trying to you know become a stylist so if any person needed any tips you know I was always like you know hand and foot trying to help you know things right. like that and then COVID happened and I was like I have to work you know I have to get it 
So I started working at Amazon and at Amazon, I met a guy there and we started doing test shoots and things like that. And one thing led another and got my foot in the door. So wow. I'm very thankful where I am today. Um, like I said before, I've had clients, you know, already, like I'm actually flying out to LA this weekend to style a music video for my musician friend. Oh my gosh. We met through Instagram because of my style. Oh my gosh. You know? And so I don't know. It's been crazy. I'm assisting right now over at the Neiman Marcus Bergdorf Goodman studio. So it's just cool. an incredible opportunity to be around pieces, you know, that are, you know, you see straight, you know, from the runway, things like that. And so it's it's a dream, man. It is a dream right now. Yeah. And, so. and, and when you're styling and when you're you know kind of consulting with somebody and helping them style, obviously, you know, you have your style yeah. preferences, but maybe they have a different style preference. Um, yeah. But how do you how do you kind of bridge the gap? And obviously you want to make sure that you're styling them in the way that they want to. But, um, yeah. you know, is that kind of is that kind of a difficult task to, to kind of balance those two? You know, you obviously like what you like, but they like what they like. Um. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of times when there really hasn't been anyone, you know, that's like butted heads with me, you know, like, oh, you know, I don't want to be styled in this, you know, right. they kind of just trust, you know, trust your eye, because I know God has given me an eye for this stuff, like detailing, yeah. you know, to perfect an image, and I, and I, 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 I'm not trying to be proper, I know, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at it, I'm decent at it, yeah, and uh, I think people can see that, you know, that I really am passionate and I come with that eye. And I think they, they allow me, you know, to put them in what I know, you know, will look good on them. Cause not everything looks good on everybody, mm -hmm. you know? Right. So you got to really find what they're going to be able to pull off, you know, and be confident in. So for sure. I also have to ask you dream job in this industry. I know that's probably a weird question to ask because I mean, we would all love to do a little bit of everything whether it's modeling, yeah, exactly. whether it's creating, whether it's designing, but um, obviously yeah. you got your foot in the door and you're doing great things. Um, but, you know, if, if you were to, to have a dream job in this industry, what would it be? Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, I got to ask, I asked, wow. I got asked that question before and I, I do hesitate because I have a lot of goals and dreams Yeah, and I would like to do, like a little bit of everything, but if someone was like, you have to choose one thing, I think it would be to be a celebrity stylist. Really? I know it's not all, you know, glitz and glam, what it makes out to be, but just being around people like that and, you know, and being a positive influence because a lot of those people are struggling. They're struggling in real life. They don't seem like they are, but they need someone to lean on. And I think a personal stylist who, who's going to be dressing them every day, what's better, you know, for someone to be, you know, a good, person in the life so yeah, yeah that, i think that would be it's interesting how, how, how you you mentioned that and going that deep with working with people because what you wear is a reflection of how you feel it's a reflection of you know your confidence um how you perceive yourself how others perceive you uh, and and obviously the the pandemic has made going out and getting fits off somewhat tough but I don't yeah. know. Even when I go to the grocery store and I get a fit off, I just I just feel good. It makes me feel happy, and I think that's an aspect exactly. that people should remember is that is that clothes can help can help uh you know mend some of these um you know, maybe mend some of the stuff you're going through mentally. It can also help you just feel more confident in yourself. And uh, like you mentioned with with celebrity styling or anybody who's going through a hard time, you know they they can get help with through clothes. I think styling is a super important aspect of that. And I think it's, I think it's crazy how, how you've gotten into styling and, and you're continuing to style. So, um, you know, going out to LA, I'm sure that's going to be a crazy experience for you. Oh yeah, man. I mean, this would be my second time going out there. The first time was surreal. Uh, I was on the plane, you know, and it hit me, I was like, Holy cow. Like I have, you know, I, I'm having a client right now. Like I'm going out to visit a client and I'm yeah. going to style her and it's gonna be crazy and i don't know man it's just it's insane so i'm i'm so thankful you know to have somebody you know that trusts me you know with my eye with my creativity for sure so that's what's surreal i have to ask you one of the last things i want to ask you tanner before we get out of here um yeah, bro. your goals in 2021 uh, and obviously it's a continue getting those fits off that we all love and see on Instagram. But, um, <laughs> yeah. 
any other goals for this year? You kind of just go with the flow at the moment. Man, I think just taking more risks mm. with my life, you know, taking more risks to grow because, you know, sometimes it gets comfortable out here. You know, you really can. And not getting comfortable with my career, you know, just trying to just constant, constantly, consistently make moves, you know, just get better, grow as a person, um, grow spiritually, grow physically, you know, in the yeah. gym getting shredded skinny boys there it is um <laughs> yes um i don't know man i think that's what it is you know yeah just taking more risks for me this year so and any tips for those people out there uh trying to post pics on instagram i personally use the tripod you know how you get your fit pics off and, and any advice on on growing on growing your instagram <sighs> my goodness i think be more consistent mm. honestly I think that's a key, uh, quality, consistency, and just being yourself, you know, not being some a-hole, you know, and I always try to respond to comments because I'm thankful, you know, for people oh, even acknowledging wow. my stuff, my outfits, yeah. like it's crazy. And I'm sure you're the same way. If someone's like, bro, that's fire. Like, it's really crazy to think that someone actually, you know, likes a piece you're wearing, like right. you really think about it. So I think that's one thing is just being a genuine person, man. That's going to get you far in life in general. So, yeah, it definitely will. It definitely will. Tanner, man, yeah. dude, I appreciate you coming on the pod. Um, I appreciate you chatting with me, you know, taking my questions and, and, and just talking about clothes. Um, but of course, man. anything you want to plug before we get out of here? Um, plug midnight rodeo, obviously shout out the homies, uh, Jackson Ray, Joseph Bunn, um, Tino, uh, Jake, Jake season on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, all those guys, you know, that are in fashion moves forward and midnight rodeo. I mean, they're killing it, man. Yeah. So support the homies, support those guys. Cause they mean the world to me. I'm sure they mean the world. To a lot of other guys, you know, that follow fashion moves forward and things like that. So yeah, I think that's my plug. <laughs> cool, man. Well, Tanner, I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to the drop. I'm looking forward uh, to more fit picks. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna be texting you, man, because some of these, some of these pieces that you've been pulling off, man, I, I need, I need to get my hands on some of this stuff. <laughs> hey, I'll sell it. I'm just playing. <laughs> All right, Tatter, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Uh, take care of yourself. Yes, Good luck with everything going out in Texas, and uh, you know, I look forward to, to everything that's gonna be happening in 2021. So I appreciate you coming on. Of course, bro. Let's get it. It's our year. It's our year. The Selective is a fashion e-commerce and consignment platform with items for sale ranging from sneakers to archive and luxury goods. You can also reach out to The Selective with clothes that you would like to sell and we'll help take the burden off of your hands. For more information, you can visit our website, which will be linked in the description of the podcast. We also have original editorial content on The Selective, bringing you insight on the history and cultural impacts of creatives from across the industry. I'll have Tanner's Instagram link below, Fashion Moves Forward and Midnight Rodeo as well. You can follow us on Instagram at The Selective. As always, thank you all so much for the time and support, and we'll see you next week.